Hello and welcome to part two of the Arduino BMS project. In this part, I want to talk a little bit about the current circuitry, the way that this is set up, as well as the current code, the way that that's set up. And I wanna talk about some of the issues that we're having, or at least one major issue that we're having with this and how I plan to solve it. Uh, so anyway, I'll start off with this because this is where the power is coming in at. I've got a 24 volt power supply that's connected to this constant current, constant voltage uh, booster, sorry, buck converter. So this is just converting the 24 volts down to roughly 12.6 that I'm getting out of here. You notice I have it set up at 13.2. That's because I've got this three amp diode in here. And that's just here to prevent the battery pack from back feeding current into the power supply, which I'm not sure if this power supply will be able to, it might be able to handle having voltage at the terminals from a battery, but a lot of them don't. And that's why I have the diode here, just in case it would damage this if I didn't have it. So better safe than sorry on that. And then uh, the, after the diode, the outputs are just connected straight into the main connector of the battery pack there. Uh, the balance connector of the pack is going into this balance circuit here, and I'll talk more about the schematic later. Uh, this is all just voltage sensing for the cells, and I've got uh, basically a power supply over here for the Arduino as well as a voltage reference. So first off, let me show you what this thing does. I've got the uh, screen capture running over here. So if I open up the serial monitor on the Arduino program, you can see what our cell voltages are. So and this actually, it's been tuned so it's fairly accurate, but you'll see 415, 413, and 412 is where they are currently sitting. Now you notice at the very bottom here I've got this uh, supply voltage, it's 4.98. Now that supply voltage is actually the voltage that is going into the Arduino here. Uh, and the reason why that's important is because the supply voltage for the Arduino is also the voltage reference for the ADC. So you need to know the supply voltage so you can calibrate your ADC to that supply voltage because uh, that will throw the results off by quite a bit. Uh, also over here I noted that I've got this sort of voltage reference. Uh, this is the voltage reference that I'm using to actually do the math and figure out what the supply voltage is. So anyway that's relatively simple. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the code. Uh, right now, I'm not going to go into too much detail in the code because it's uh, not really finalized at all yet. There's a lot of work to do. But the first thing I'm going to do right now is go ahead and enable the uh, output of the power supply. And you're going to see the biggest issue that we have with this thing here once we get over the 4.2 volts or so. And there it is. You notice this thing uh, oscillates between two states. And it will just continue to do that forever. And it actually, I did run the battery pack down once and then charge it with this, and it does an okay job of balancing. The problem is, is once it gets up to voltage, it just continues to do this. And that's even like when the cell voltages are way too high. So the voltage just continues to creep up and up and up. Uh, and it doesn't really put a cap on it because of this oscillation. And even if I turn the power supply back off right now, it's gonna to continue to oscillate for quite a while and it'll actually bring the cell voltages back down to like 4.1 or something like that before it stops oscillating. And if you look over here, you'll notice why kind of. Um, the code is doing what it's supposed to, but if you look at the voltages, uh, like the cell one voltage is swinging between 4.25 and 3.66. Cell two voltage is even worse, 3.68 to 4.44. So, the voltages are the voltages that this thing is reading anyway are quite a bit higher than they really should be when they're off anyway. So the way to fix this, and one commenter suggested it on the last video, is essentially going to be to allow it to balance for a while and then shut the balance circuit off and then take a measurement so that none of these uh, balance circuits are turned on. And I think part of the issue with this is just the voltage drop in the cabling, which you're not going to get rid of. So. Uh, that's just how this is going to be. One of the other issues that I'm having with this is you'll notice I have all these black wires that run well, kind of all over the place, but most of the ground points are being ran back to the Arduino. And that's because I've been having issues just with the contacts on the breadboard aren't you know that great. So there's a bit of voltage drop in all the grounds. And when you're trying to use ground on the reference for all of these uh, voltage dividers, then you kind of have issues there. 
and you know the voltage readings get off because you don't have a good ground so I've tried to fix that it's still not great it's not perfect but it works uh, well enough so I'm just gonna kind of leave this thing in shot over here uh, mind you the power supply is still turned off so it's just kind of oscillating on its own now for no real reason but as that's doing its thing I'm gonna go ahead and give you a look at the code so over here, uh, the first block up here is all just declaring variables, so there's not much to that. This part is the calibration value, as I've called it. Now, I originally had different plans for this, but essentially the way that I did this was to inject roughly the voltage that I was expecting to have on the resistors. So across here and here, I put like 3.7 volts on it. And I just took 50 plus uh, whatever voltage it took to get the voltage measurement right. And then on this one, I did it at like 8.4 volts. And then on this one, I would do it at like 12.6 uh, because the voltage dividers are gonna be tuned to work in that specific range because, well, that's where they need to work at uh, for the cell voltages. And the reason why it's 50 is because these are 10 to 1 voltage dividers. So if you put 50 volts in, you'll get 5 volts out, which the Arduino can measure. The next one is Zener V. Uh, so this is the Zener voltage. It's at 2.33. That is the voltage that I measured across this Zener diode right here. And that is what we're using as the voltage reference currently. I plan to get like some sort of proper voltage reference. Like I think they're LTZ 1000s or something like that some kind of actual decent voltage reference. So this actually does do an okay job. The problem is, is when the, if the supply voltage swings, the voltage across that Zener diode will swing as well. So not the most stable thing. Though the way it's set up right now is actually doing a pretty good job. This part is just more variable declaration, so nothing too important going on there. Uh, the balance val is the value where it starts balancing at. So right now it's at 4.2. So that's just when the balance circuits kick in. Pretty simple. More variables that are just being declared here. Uh, and the number of averages is the number of times that, well, it's the number of averages I take to get the voltage reading, which improves the accuracy a decent bit. These three are the pins that the MOSFETs are connected to. So two, three, and four are just digital output pins. This part, we've got serial.begin. Uh, and that's just so I can initialize a serial monitor. That's pretty simple, of course. And these three are just declaring those pins as outputs. All right, so coming down to the void loop, the first thing that's in there is a for loop, which is there to measure the voltage. So the way that this works is we have that number of averages that comes back again. So this for loop will run 100 times in order to get the average. Uh, but anyway, coming down here, uh, Zener val is equal to analog read A3, which is the pin that the uh, Zener is connected to. And then we're taking that analog value and we are converting it into the supply voltage. And what we're doing with that is taking our supply voltage minus 5, which is giving me a very small number at this point, it'd be 0 0.02. And we're multiplying that by 10. And then down here, we're actually using that in order to offset the supply voltage so we actually have the proper voltage reading instead of just assuming that it's 50, which would be five volts on the Arduino. And like I said, we're using 10 to one divider, so we're using 50 instead of five in order to get the correct voltage reading. Of course, these three are just measuring the analog values of the individual cells on these different voltage dividers. And these are the ones doing the math to get an actual voltage reading. And then this part just takes the current, what I called average val, and it takes it to the average val plus the current value of it. And of course, that's how you do average. You add a bunch of its things together and then you divide it by the number of times you added it together, essentially. Then there's a delay of 10 milliseconds and we're running this uh, 100 times, so 10 times 100 is 1,000. So it's roughly a one second period of time that we are measuring the voltage and getting that average for. And you notice that seems about right. These lights are probably flashing about once a second, maybe a little bit slower because we're also doing a bunch of math on this. Uh, but anyway, this is the part, well, now we're out of the for loop. So this is the end of the for loop here. And then we are actually figuring the math on the averages or to get the average. And this part 
is here to actually allow me to split out the individual cell voltages because if you actually just read out the raw values, what you have is 4.2 volts, 8.4 volts on this one, and 12.6 volts on this one. So this is just doing the math to actually turn it into uh, something so that they're all 4.2 volts. So that's done in software, of course. And that's just because of the way we have to use the ground of the Arduino as the ground of the voltage references or the voltage uh, dividers here. And then we're just outputting that to the serial monitor and then we have the code that's just if the cell one average voltage is greater than the balance voltage, we turn a pin high which enables the balance circuit. And if it's not, then we turn it low and we just do that once per cell and then down at the bottom we reset the uh, averaging values. So that's about all there is to this version of the code. Uh, I will eventually put comments and everything on this, what everything's for, what it does, and all that, but right now it's just such a rough version of the code. All right, so we will go ahead and take a look at what I've called revision 0.1 of the schematic. You may have noticed that I called the revision of the code 0.1 as well, and that's because most of this is still subject to change, and of course nothing is finalized yet. So, anyway, we're going to take a look at this. We're going to start off up here because that's probably the simplest part. And this is exactly what you think it is. This is an LM7805 voltage regulator. We have that connected to the positive most cell of the battery, which I've named B311V1, which is the nominal voltage at that point in the circuit. And of course that outputs to five volts and you got your uh, bypass caps on here. So that's fairly simple. Next part we'll look at is over here. This is the voltage sensing circuitry. So we've got uh, three voltage dividers as well as the voltage reference as I've called it here. It's not really a proper voltage reference. It is just a 2.4 volt Zener diode, which is actually measuring uh, 2.33 volts, which is kind of odd, but that's what I'm getting out of it. I will eventually replace that with like a proper uh, voltage reference, hopefully like an LTZ1000 or something like that. But anyway, uh, the way that this is set up, we have voltage dividers, which are essentially 10 to one, as I mentioned, as I was talking about the code. Uh, but anyway, they're 18K and 2K. So the 2K resistors on the ground side and the 18K resistors on the side that's going out to the batteries. And then the center point of those is just going into the analog pin. So that's quite simple. Uh, so of course, we've got one hooked up to the 3V7 volt uh, mark on the batteries. We've got one hooked up to the 7V4 point and the one on the 11V1 point. And the ground of the batteries is all just connected to the ground of the circuit. And then over here, the, uh, the Zener diode is just powered through a 470 ohm resistor. Uh, nothing too special there. All right, so this is the part of the circuitry that's actually doing the balancing. We'll go ahead and take a look at this next. And what I'm gonna do here is just kind of trace the output of the Arduino here, just one of them, and I'll kind of explain what's going on with it. So if we trace that, we go through that line, then back up to here. We're going through a 1K resistor, which is going into a, or the base of a 2N2222 transistor. A 2N3904 would work just as well. It's basically just a small signal transistor. And this is just kind of how I have it set up for now. Eventually I want to replace these things with proper MOSFET drivers instead of just using the uh, discrete transistors to do this. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much for this application because we're switching it so slow. But anyhow, the emitter of that transistor is just hooked up to ground and the collector is hooked up to another 1K resistor, which is then going into the base of a P and P transistor, which is a 2N3906. The emitter on that is connected to the B311V1 point, and that, of course, is the highest voltage of the pack, which is, you know, roughly 12 volts when it's fully charged. But anyway, that transistor then goes through a 120 ohm resistor, which is connected to the gate of an in channel MOSFET. Also connected to the gate of that MOSFET is a 100K pull down resistor that just continues to have the MOSFET shut off until it needs to, well, be activated by this circuit. This transistor essentially just turns on a five ohm resistor as well as this LED, which is powered through a 220 ohm resistor. And over here, this is connected to the 3V7 or the first cell of the pack there. And that essentially allows me to drain power out of just one single cell. Well, through here, basically. The next one you'll notice goes between 
the 3v7 point and the 7v4 point. So that allows me to be able to drain power through this path, which would only be the second cell. And the last one goes between the 7v4 point and the 11v1 point, which of course allows me to pass current only through the last cell, which would be right there. This arrangement also allows for us to be able to discharge two cells. And what, let's just say that these two turned on, what you would end up with is current coming through here. It would essentially bypass this point and it would just continue going back out of this point if you turn two on. If you turned all three of them on, it would go all the way through and then back to ground over here. So that's essentially how that's going. Uh, like I said, or like I think I mentioned, we can push about 800 milliamps worth of balance current, which is a decent amount for the sort of packs that I want to use this for. So nothing too exciting about this schematic right now. One of the things, or a couple of things that I'm going to add to this, I want to put in a MOSFET where I can actually disable the charge going into the batteries entirely. And I also want to have an LCD on here so we can uh, do different things with this. I want to uh, be able to discharge the cells as well, do balance charging, and do storage charging. Now I should mention what type of MOSFET that I'm using here, because uh, these are somewhat special. These are RPF 12N10Ls, I believe. And the reason why these are so special is because these are logic level MOSFETs, which might actually be what that L is in the part number. But anyway, they're from Fairchild, not that that really matters. But the reason why they're logic level FETs is because if you look at this last one here, and you realize that the ground of this transistor is at 7.4 volts and the gate is only going to be at 11.1 well now your gate voltage is really only 3.7 volts which would be your gate to source voltage i believe it would be and that is going to kind of limit because normal mosfets are rated to have a gate to source voltage of 10 volts or higher and we're only pushing like 3.7, maybe all the way down to two and a half volts in some very rare instances if I put some kind of a mode that lets you drain the batteries all the way down that far. But using the logic level FETs are a little bit better for that because they're designed to handle the lower gate voltage. Uh, of course, these tend to have a higher on resistance, which really you probably could just use a standard in-channel MOSFET and just deal with the fact that that normal in-channel MOSFET's gonna have a relatively high on resistance when you have a lower gate voltage going into it. But again, we're only pushing 800 milliamps through it, so that resistance in the transistor may not actually be that big of a deal. So anyway, that gives you a little look at this version of the schematic and where this project is right now. So the next step in this will be to make this circuit actually be able to do a proper balancing and not have it go into that horrible oscillation thing where it can't actually measure the voltage accurately. So if you want to see the next video in the series, click on that subscribe button. If you like this video or you like the project idea, click the like button. If you want to see some smaller updates on this, you can follow me on Twitter. There's a link for that in the description. And that's about it for now, guys. Bye.